What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Benny on the Beat, episode 25. Are you sure about that? Benny on the Beat, episode 26. I can't keep track. I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm a busy guy. It is good to be back for the second time in a row since we've restarted the series. And I asked you guys how long you thought I would be able to keep this going. I was surprised how many of you had no faith that, uh, that I would be able to keep it going. Actually... I was worried I wasn't going to make this episode because we have to take off this morning, like in a few hours. So we're going to get right into this. If you guys don't want to watch the whole video, you're specifically here for certain parts of it, like the stories on the job and you don't want all the other shenanigans, just a note, if you'll look in the description of the video, I'm going to put bullet points with timestamps on where the different areas of the video are at. Did I just spit? Yep. Let's take a look at some comments from last week. Oh, let me bring these over here. All right, Rich Scott, one tickety-boo for you and another tickety-boo for your passenger. Laugh out loud, us. Oh, no. Oh, no. What have I done? Police officers cannot say this. It will not be cute to the person getting a ticket. And that's not that's not the meaning of the word tickety-boo. Ticket is not the root word. <laughs> it is kind of cute, though. Gabriel... Gabriel, meanwhile, in Brazil, four-man cars is the standard. Detainees go in the trunk. That's no joke. That's no joke. They do not mess around in Brazil. Have you guys seen how they handle high-speed chases in Brazil? Yeah, no joke. That was a video I put up on our Facebook page. If you guys don't follow us on our other platforms, shameless plug. Joseph Hurley should have become a firefighter. We have plenty of time to vlog. Can you imagine Fuzz Fam Firefighter or Firefighter Fuzz Fam? What I mean, it just it goes right off the tongue. It's almost like it was meant to be. I'm actually really great at everything firefighters do. I just don't know about driving the truck. I don't know if they'd let let me, you know, I, especially given. Well, I don't know. Yeah, that could be. Oh no, Johnny Breezy, you better watch it. Calling us Satan is a good way to get more interesting calls. <laughs> I may have in the last video alluded to dispatch as uh, Satan or referred to them. As Satan. Now it was just an example, uh, just an example word, just picking it out of thin air. I wasn't really calling dispatch Satan. Anyway, some of the dispatchers um, noticed that. I wasn't sure if they would. I should have known they would. And uh, okay, yeah. Well, I guess what goes around comes around. Be gentle. Eric P Petone, Petone, mamma mia, mamma mia. Okay, that's not probably. How often do you have traffic stops with semi truck drivers? And are you a DOT certified to do inspections? DOT. I'm just kidding. I know what DOT means. I, guess, like, I don't know what anything is. So, Eric, I've done traffic stops with uh, trucks before. We certainly can pull them over. Um, I actually did more of them back when my brother used to be a truck driver because I'd pull over the trucks. I'd call my brother and say, all right, what do I check for? Like, what should they be doing? And he would give me the list. He's like, oh, if he tells you this, he's messing with you. If he doesn't have this, he sh totally should, you know, whatever. Uh, but no, I'm not DOT certified to do inspections. Absolutely not. Kevin Army, so guess you should stay off the freeway. And why is that, Kevin? Care to explain what you mean by that comment? Maybe you mean everything bad that's ever happened in my car has been on the freeway? Except that one time we won't talk about. You might be onto something, buddy. You might be onto something. It always seems to be, and you know what? It's a same spot. It's the same spot. It's If I think about it, it's within like a one mile stretch on the freeway. Every time on the freeway, there's been something that's happened. It's been at that spot. It's like my personal Bermuda Triangle. Jonah Mason, plot twist. Officer Man was the one that backed you. Oh no. <laughs> a lot of people here, especially if they're new, may not know who Officer Man is. Of course, you'd have to watch our other videos, our family vlogs, not just these to know. Hi. Hello there. And that is it for the questions. I love your guys' comments and questions. Keep leaving them. Obviously we can't get to all of them, but if yours is good enough, it stands out for no good reason whatsoever I can think of, and I don't know where it even started. Should we uh, continue with uh, the weather report segment? Probably not, but let's just do it anyway. Here's this week's weather report. Winter's coming. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you, moving on. How about a weekly police car or patrol car update? I've got a picture uh, here as proof. All right, you know what? Hold on. Uh, it was the wrong picture. All right, here's a better one. My car is totally fine what about a new section to the video because we don't have enough pointless uh sections to this i'm, I'm eventually going to drive everybody away from these because you can't stand all these random segments but somebody made a recommendation i don't know where the comments at but they asked about me doing uh asmr uh if you don't know what asmr is you're better off not knowing but uh let's start a segment at least for this one video i don't know if i'll keep doing it with uh cop asmr Yes. 
You are detained. If you had to choose two words to describe this series and, and what I represent on YouTube, uh, it'd probably be dumpster fire. Without further ado, let's move on to some of the calls I had at work this week. So you guys continue to get some of those insights into what it's like to be a police officer and what my job is like. It is not always your hair is on fire, Michael Bay type action on this job. In fact, more often than not, it's uh, these type of calls that I had this week. But if you really want an insight in what it's like, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna listen to these boring calls. You're gonna consume it and you're gonna love it. Okay, take it easy. Okay, so this one was a welfare check on a citizen in a house. A, a neighbor passing by on a walk had noticed their front porch light was flashing three times. I don't blame him for thinking this. What's the standard universal sign with lights for I need help, I'm in trouble, uh, SOS? Three flashes, right? Three of like anything, I guess. Anything? If you eat three hot dogs in a row, is it a silent indicator? All right, I'm thinking too much into this. He was concerned with the three flashing lights that somebody inside the homeowner was signaling they needed help. It could be a reasonable thing to be concerned about, right? So he called us. I went over there and parked across the street. I could see the lights flashing. What I began to notice was it was not random. It was not like three period of time, another three. It was on the dot. You could set your clock by it consistent, the exact interval, three flashes, short pause, three flashes, right? So I'm wondering how long has this been going on? Because I'm thinking this is obviously an electrical glitch. There's a short or something like that. But I still went over to the house to check it out, knocked on the door, nobody was home, knocked on the neighbor's door, nobody was home. Walked around the back of the house, made sure everything looked tickety-boo. Oh, it's gonna stick now. Great. Everything looked fine, walked back around and there were some neighbors out front talking about it. One of them was actually the complainant and I asked them how long it had been going on. They said it had been that way nonstop for over two days. A glitch or an electrical problem, right? At least that's my opinion. If you're really needing help, you are not going to be able to sit there consistently without break, have a consistent pattern. You know what I'm saying? All right. The next one was a person that called worried that a uh, telephone pole in a park uh, had been severely damaged via criminal mischief and was uh, in danger of falling over. So they were worried about a you know, safety hazard, light pole in the park is gonna fall over on somebody. Okay. So I went up there and uh, found the pole in question, uh, looked kind of like this. So somebody had, you know, either knocked some of these pieces of wood off or uh, a squirrel, uh, I don't know, maybe like a, a large angry squirrel. You know what, there's a drug problem in our city. There's a lot of it going around. If a squirrel got a hold of a bag of crack or something, who knows what they'd be capable of? It could totally be a squirrel. I'm probably thinking a little too much into this, but I mean, somehow or another, this kind of damage uh, was caused to the light pole. However, looking at the pole overall, it was still totally intact. It was not anywhere close to being in danger of falling over. I mean, if you guys seen those light poles, you've seen them where they're like half broken and you're sure they're about ready to fall. And they still will last through storms, wind, and everything else for another like 10 15 years i don't know what the deal is with these light poles or the wood they use for light poles but they don't fall over easily they don't break easily unless you're a squirrel on crack you can break them easily all right next one was a civil dispute a woman called saying that uh, a group of males called her name now i didn't know if this meant somebody was using her name like a fraud type situation. Like surely this wasn't like somebody called her names like elementary school playground and she called the police about that, right? Well, so I called her up, talked to her and uh, she was very upset because she'd been walking her dog by another neighbor and um, got into an altercation. She told the neighbor to move his dog out of the way or something because she didn't want to be close to it. And he didn't like that. So he called her a name. I asked her a little bit about what name he called her. I was trying to think if there was any kind of like racial aspect of this or something like that. She's just an old gal who chose to shave her head, so he called her Baldy. Now, I'm not excusing the uh, name calling by the neighbor. We should all treat each other like we want to be treated. Golden rule, right? But do you really call the police because someone called you Baldy? Well, yes, apparently you do. So I talked to her and I just, at that point, what do you do? I mean, now an officer could kind of jump on her and tell her this is not what we're here for. You, I'm vlogging here. Don't bother us about this kind of stuff. But I mean, the appropriate thing to do is just realize that to her, it was important enough that she made the effort to call the police. So in her mind, this is a big deal. When people call us, when people call the police, it's the worst point of their day. It's the worst day out of their week because they had to call us. Empathize a little bit and just do your best to help the situation, right? 
Yep. So that's it. Uh, obviously, boring calls, right? Nothing super fun or exciting, but hopefully it still gives you an insight into the job if you're interested in doing this or you're a cop and you just like hearing what other people are doing on the job. Or if you're just here for the weather report or the, uh, the cop ASMR. Whatever it is that brings you here, thank you for being here. Thanks for watching the video. Please remember to leave a like on the video. That signals YouTube to send it out to other people. Helps more people find our channel. All right, you guys are awesome. We'll see you on the next video. Everybody have a great week. Yeah.